Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. It is time for a monitoring my beauty purchases video. Also a was that haul worth it video and a little update on my 2023 low buy. So I didn't do one of these videos last month just because, or for uh, March, um, just because hectic crazy time and didn't really have all that much to talk about so I figured that I would combine March and April together. I have made a couple of purchases which we'll get into soon but I'm actually going to start by talking about the products that I purchased in March and April of 2022. So my March purchases were the D-Up Lash Glue. I purchased two of them because uh, I needed lash glue and I still have them. That's, you know, great. I still use them. I love it. It's good stuff. Will probably buy more in the future when I need it, but they're still going strong. I also had the CND Bonder Shaper and Builders and these are basically like builder gels for the nails. I have been very into sort of finding like the perfect nail system for me at the moment. Uh, for years I was using builder gels which were great. I was able to grow my own nails really long. The builder gels kept them really strong, gave them a lot of like structure um, and I was able to grow them pretty much to the length that I have them now. These ones though, these are gel extensions. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment simply because I've been moving a lot uh, since the end of last year and the moving is still not done. We're kind of almost there but we're not quite there yet. So I've been testing out this system which was something that I discovered last year but had no reason to purchase it because I already had long nails and just sort of jumped on the opportunity. Uh, when I was moving because you know when you have long nails and you're trying to like pack stuff and move furniture and all that stuff uh, it's a liability okay dog's got something to say so the CND system that I purchased I really enjoyed I used it quite a bit <laughs> the dog wants a she wants a belly rub you, you what what I I need to work. So the system was great. No, she's still not done. Don't stand on the iPad. Um, <laughs> help guys. I need a filming setup where I'm not sat on the ground. <laughs> where the dog can access me. Do you want a head massage? Do you want that one? Oh yes. That's a nice one. Good girl. Okay, we'll lay down. Lay down. Good. Don't knock the camera. Thanks, baby. Okay, so <laughs> the CND system that I purchased was great. Um, I have stopped using it just for now because, like I said, I'm testing out some other stuff. Um, but it's certainly like something I will come back to in the future and it was a great purchase. Loved it. As for my April of 2022 purchases, this was one of my worst purchases of 2022. I picked up the Sigma Switch. Now I decluttered it. I think I might have given it to Madeline or maybe I didn't. I can't remember. All I know is I definitely decluttered it. Um, I think I used it like maybe once or twice and was just like, yeah, I think like it worked. It, there was nothing really wrong with that. It just didn't, it didn't fit into my makeup lifestyle. All of my brushes are spot cleaned after I use them. So anything that, um, is like used with a cream, especially, they are always spot cleaned with isopropyl alcohol, 80% to one, remove product buildup, but also to prevent bacteria growth. Uh, when it comes to powder, like brushes I use for powder products, exact same thing. Um, I always spot clean them after every use because I, look, I have a makeup artistry background. It was drilled into us when I was training um, 
you know, about hygiene and the dangers of using dirty tools and um, the kinds of bacteria that tools can harbor. So for me, um, I just, yeah, I, I just, I, I clean my brushes after I use them basically. And I think the only way that the Sigma switch would have been useful for me is if I was, let's say I was traveling and I had a very minimal selection of brushes and I wanted to use one brush for multiple products. But even then, I know how to use the brush with the products in a specific order to make sure that like no product is really like impacting the application of the next one. So it was just like a pointless product for me. I got caught up in like sort of the hype um, of other people really loving the Sigma Switch. So I picked one up for myself, but I shouldn't have. It was just not, it wasn't a smart purchase for me. Now, when it comes to what I've purchased in, um, oh God, I'm, my brain is so bad with time at the moment. Um, March and April of this year, it has been very centered around like one specific thing and that is my nails. So like I said, I'm using gel extensions at the moment. Um, if you watched my last video, I talked about purchasing the Apre um, gel, gel X system and um, I tested that out and I both, look, I loved it. It's fantastic, um, but the tips that I purchased, or the nail, I don't know if they call them tips or just extensions, whatever, the ones that I purchased way, way, way too long for me. I bought the long coffin, and um, I really like the shape of them, but the length just way, way, way too long. Now, I did buy some nail clippers like clippers that you would use for like cutting nail extensions um i haven't bothered to put it in this video because it's a tool it's something that i didn't own previously and i just i don't feel like it's really all that important to be like oh i'm trying to monitor how many of these i buy like now that i own a pair i'm not going to buy another pair so uh that's not really you know, what this series is meant to be about. Even after I cut them down, I found that they required too much filing. Um, cutting them down, you lost a lot of the, like the shape, the coffin shape. Um, so I really didn't like the length of the nails and I just decided that like, I'm not, I'm not gonna use them. My plan was to sell them and then purchase um, a shorter set from a prey, but after I removed those um, nails and realized just how good they were, like how easy they were to apply, how well they lasted on my nails, how strong they were, and also um, how easy they came off, I was like, I already know that I like a prey, and I could definitely go ahead and order a shorter set and maybe a different style to test out. But I was also really curious about cheaper alternatives. So there are quite a few brands that are sold on Amazon. And also I know that you can pick them up on AliExpress as well. So one evening I was, you know, browsing and I bought, I bought some things. So off um, Amazon, I picked up these ones. These are the Saviland um, Professional Nail Tip Kit for Nail Extensions. Um, these are basically like, it's a Gel X dupe type thing. I got, these are the, the ones that I'm wearing right now. They're the Medium Almond. And I can tell you right now, even these are a little bit too long for me. Um, I wasn't sure what size I would enjoy or what shape I would enjoy. So that led me to purchase a few different types. So these ones off um, Amazon, I think they were maybe 20 bucks, which is so much cheaper than the, um, the Gel X system from Apre. And uh, it's a comparable amount that you get in the set. So there's 552 pieces in here. Um, now, 
mine have been on for I think it's about three weeks now they are showing absolutely no signs of lifting which is so good um, I'm really really happy with them but honestly I would like these to be a bit shorter what I have noticed with them is um, like for me the pinky fingers are like the perfect length but as you sort of get up into like the oh the thumbs aren't too bad but these ones I'd kind of like them to be a bit shorter so I'm mentally at the moment I'm thinking loving this brand really happy with the quality and what you know the the price point and what you get um, but I would like to try them in a shorter size I would have bought these in a short meat a uh, short almond if they had them but they didn't they were sold out the only thing that I haven't experienced with these yet that I'm I'm not too sure about so I don't know if I'm going to be happy or not is removal how easy they are to remove so the gel x ones are so easy to remove like they basically melt off the finger which surprises me because they were so strong and they held so well to the nail um, for weeks but uh, when it came to removing them they just like they just melt off with acetone so I'm hoping that these do the same I'm assuming that they will but I won't actually know until I try them something else I want to mention before I go on to the other ones and forget is Gelex does have one thing over these brands. Um, it is the fact that once you know what shape you like and the sizes that you require for your nails, you can buy individual pouches of the nails that you need. So that way you're not stuck with a bunch of nail sizes that don't fit you and aren't suitable for you. Now, they can of course be filed down, but um, because these are meant to sit over like all of your nail and you know, it's not just a tip that you then tidy up with acrylic or gel or something, um, having them fit properly is pretty important because they are tapered at the edges, which means they sit quite flush and natural looking um, on your nail bed. So if you're filing them down when they're bigger to make them fit, you lose some of that nice tapered smooth edge and then you have to go in and do more work with a drill to you know make them look really smooth or with a hand file. So I do think that Ultimately, maybe if I like continue using this system for a long time to come, which at this point, um, like I'm digging it a lot more than my old system of doing a full overlay over all my natural nails. Um, I think I would potentially still lean towards Gel X because, or the Apray Gel X, because I'll be able to able to buy my individual sizes. So there's that um, then I did purchase two more off Aliexpress now there are so many available on Aliexpress and it's like it's a minefield it's just I spent hours like reading reviews and thinking that I'd found a brand that I wanted to try and then realizing that they didn't have a shape or a style or like a length that I wanted. So in the end, I was like, oh, look, I'm just going to buy these two and leave it at that. I simply because the purchasing experience was quite annoying with AliExpress. I don't know if I'd go there again. I'm just going to put it out there. But these were so cheap. So if the quality works out nice then you know maybe maybe i'll go back and buy some more um i purchased these ones they're from a brand called nail pop these are the short almond um and again they're like i think oh i nearly lost one don't don't lose it um the thing with these ones, they're quite similar to the Savi Land ones in the fact that they have like a, um, the section where the nail bed, like it sits on the nail bed, it's already like roughed up. So you don't have to get in there with a drill or a file or um, acetone to sort of, you know, help it adhere to the nail properly. Um, but 
these are tiny like these are tiny i don't even know if i if i'm going to be able to get like a full fit out of these um it's interesting like the thumb ones so there's like a zero and then there's a one and i think the zero is way too big and the one is potentially too small so i don't know i don't know um if they don't work out for me because of the size then it's fine because i'm pretty sure these were about eight dollars then i purchased these ones i believe they were even cheaper than the nail pop ones um these like they have nothing on them no name no brand nothing uh these were i think a medium stiletto so or maybe they were a short stiletto um but they're basically the same length as the medium almond ones that i am wearing um and of course like th i think that's the thing about these um like gel extension type products depending on the shape that you get um, it's going to impact the length so obviously having like a short stiletto is quite difficult because you need a certain amount of length to actually get a stiletto appearance um, so yeah I, I can't remember if these were short or medium I'm sure it would say in the email but I'm not checking because I don't really care that much. I bought them just because I want to try them out. I am going to do a video on my experience, but I'm obviously I've got two more different sets to get through. And when they last so well on the nails and there's no reason for me to remove them, uh, it just blows out the time of the, uh, like the review period. So we'll get there eventually. Um, I did buy another thing. And I'm particularly pissed off about this. I bought dry shampoo. So, <laughs> why am I mad about this? Um, okay, so obviously I moved from Melbourne to Western Australia and I transported my stuff in two ways. I took a lot with me on the plane in suitcases and then the rest of my stuff went in the boot of my car, which took months to get to me. Now, um, when you're traveling with aerosols on a plane, they have to be taken in your like carry on luggage. And, um, I didn't want to carry like the 15 cans of dry shampoo that I had <laughs> at home in my carry on. Cause I thought that was a little bit weird and potentially a safety, uh, issue. So I opted to just not do that. And I definitely did not want to store any of these in my car over the Australian summer while it sat in, I can only assume, a giant car park in the sun for months. Uh, again, I thought that might be a hazard. So um, I left them all at home. I decluttered them. I know mum said like my auntie and my sister and a bunch of people went through the stuff and took whatever they wanted. So I left them all at home. Now, I don't use dry shampoo all that much. So I wasn't too worried about not bringing any with me. However, my hair decided that for some reason it was just going to start to look kind of greasy at the roots the day after I washed it for no reason. Don't know, don't know why. Haven't really changed my hair routine using the same sort of products that I've been using for years. Just my hair decided to do that. So I was like, fine, I'm going to buy a can of dry shampoo. I'm pretty sure I got it on sale. Bonus Jonas. Bought it at Chemist Warehouse, I think, which made it even cheaper. Um, and then never needed to use it because my hair just decided that it was going to be normal again why <laughs> uh, anyway so i have a can of batiste uh, tropical coconut and exotic tropical dry shampoo um i'm sure i will use it eventually uh, I'm, I'm mostly just annoyed because i was like i need dry shampoo i don't want to buy it i left so many at home finally caved and purchased it and now i don't need it so there you go. Also, um, on my last video, I had a lot of people asking, what are you looking at? What, what are you looking at? 
I've got a big window in front of me and there's a really beautiful view with beautiful big trees and it's just it's nicer to look out there than it is at the camera <laughs> so that's what I'm looking at um, so that is everything that I purchased and how I'm feeling about my purchases from 2022 as for the low buy um, it's going well. I'm not feeling any great need to purchase anything other than, you know, getting a little bit swept up in these guys, um, which is not unusual for me. Like when I get interested in something and I've been like really enjoying nail stuff for quite a few years now, um, I really enjoy trying different brands and different like versions of the product. I would say that having like four different sets, so the Apre, the Savvy Land, and then the two that I picked up from AliExpress is way, way too much. Um, like I technically now have like over 2000 of these nail tips. Um, not all of them will be usable, of course. Um, that is, you know, an excess, but um, I didn't spend a lot of money on them. The Apray system was the most expensive, but I do not regret buying that system because the other products, like the products that you use to adhere them and all of that stuff, um, and the quality of the tips are just like primo and now that I've tried something that I think is a really really good system it gives me a lot of like knowledge when it comes to testing out cheaper alternatives and getting a feel for them so um, I don't regret that at all um, I am happy that the ones that I chose to purchase after that were much more affordable in that you know category of probably easy to maintain if you fall in love with it but you're trying to do it on a budget so um, that's really good in terms of other purchases I'm not really feeling the urge to buy anything I I will say like this month um, and the end of March very very stressful time for me um, and Chris like we've been through the ringer with um, getting this house purchase sorted out um, and there have been times where I felt like I kind of wanted to sort of stress shop when it comes to beauty things mostly what I'm thinking about is oh I want to buy the things that I know I'm low on so like um, face wash and exfoliating toners or like liquid exfoliators they're the kind of things that I've been like sometimes I'll jump on Space NK or Mecca or Sephora or whatever and I'll start browsing and I'm like mm -hmm, these are the things that I'm gravitating towards at the moment but I haven't purchased any of them I know I don't need them yet um, I can probably go and another like I mean an exfoliating toner or exfoliate liquid exfoliator I could really use one of them right now because I'm super low and the ones that I have like I prefer to ditch them and go to something that I've already tried and I know I love but um, like I'm gonna survive for a few more months without them I think so that's kind of where I've been at with the like beauty purchasing I'm not I'm not interested in any makeup at the moment I'm not like I'm just not interested where I am feeling like I want to shop it's more things like stuff around your house so I'm like I'm excited to go and um, pick up some new bed linen there's a few furniture pieces we need I have to set up a whole new like filming space so there's going to be a lot of stuff that I need there um, but also I'm trying to rein it in because I know like I don't have the funds to just I mean we've just purchased our house it's damaged our bank account significantly um, <laughs> I don't have the funds to just go and you know do that all in a day or a week it's going to be something that I do over a significant amount of time yeah I'm trying to not get too carried away 
with that. I'm trying to calm down purchasing Haley, but other than like the sort of excite the the feeling that I have where I want to like excited buy stuff or stress buy stuff, I have been able to just, you know, chill out on those. I suppose the stress purchase stuff is or the stress buying urge is probably the easiest one to just be like just go eat some chocolate instead or <laughs> like put on a movie that you love instead or something like that that's the easiest um thing for me to sort of pull myself away from the excited purchasing urge is the most difficult one because i know that that day is eventually going to come where we're going out to like look for things um, and I'm just excited to do that so that's probably the hardest one that requires more patience but the stress buying one that's easy to like you know just make those thoughts go away so I'm gonna leave it there guys feel free to leave your comments down below um, about anything that you either saw in this video or that I talked about and I We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.